everybody welcome back to the channel so i'm out here kind of just hanging out this is going to be a shorter video uh, but just want to show kind of using some of my stuff in action uh, winter just gets really cold and it's not as enjoyable to film winter stuff and so i was like well i'm out here filming and uh might as well film a little bit of camping content so i'm out here in the black hills I'll just kind of show you the surrounds here found this sweet Kind of opening area off a of forest road that's got just this huge bluff with all these massive rocks right around pretty awesome wasn't too hard to get down the road forest road was pretty tame um, but yeah we're going to be cooking up some steaks and uh, just enjoying ourselves we just got done with a full day of riding dirt bikes and it's a little bit rainy but overall uh, kind of a fun day so i'll walk you down to this little river here it's kind of pretty so i'll show you that i mean just to have some of those massive rock formations up there it's kind of cool enough but to have a river here as well kind of to have that running water sound pretty awesome so i'm gonna have a range of videos coming for you all uh, once i get back home Installed a ton of stuff at C4, which was a lot of fun. It was a good time hanging out with them. They've got a crazy shop, really nice manufacturing facility. It was fun to check it out, kind of see it for the first time myself, and also just get a bunch of new fun stuff on the Forerunner. So here's another little spot on this river that looks pretty awesome. Forerunner's been doing a pretty good job of actually towing this trailer. I'm not getting great gas mileage, but it's doing a pretty good job. We've got three dirt bikes and all of the C4 armor and then this trailer. And the trailer's really not super heavy, so it's been all right. Um, got this little grill that I'm testing out. Kind of show you a little bit more about it, uh, but it's like a assemblable grill, so it comes all small and you sort of put all the pieces together and we've just been letting it run get sort of hot so that we can throw some steaks on uh, obviously you all know my tailgate setup but running this ice code dual zone fridge as well i'll talk a little bit more about this but been using this on the trip i charged my ecoflow delta max twice now i think um but this runs probably three to five days maybe even longer uh, without any recharge of the battery so if you had a trickle charger off of like a dual battery or you had solar or you just had a spot where you could plug in your battery to charge it once in a while you'd be good to go you can see down here Got it set to 32 and 34. This thing's a beast, but my brother's been riding in the back seat there. Excuse kind of that trash from unpacking my grill, but um, yeah, this totally fits in front of that, or behind that seat, I guess I should say, and tons of storage for food and everything else. So, well, and because I was planning to camp one night, uh, I left the drawer on this side or the slide on this side out so i brought my rome 105 liter my trusty camp and cooking and everything storage um, it's great because this pulls out and then this lid lifts up this direction so it's really nice and i like storing all my things in it uh, but you could move this out of the way and just sleep here which is what i typically do another thing that's super handy is my kamek awning so Kind of see in the background there it's been actually raining a ton and i've been using it a lot um, had to pack up my trailer and do a bunch of other stuff today and yesterday in the rain i just quick pulled out the awning and it's kind of funny 
I feel like I've used an awning more for rain than for snow, but uh, it's been really nice having this along. And when it's raining, you don't have time to quick set up an awning. But with this one, it takes such little time. Kamek did an awesome job. And we've got it pulled out right now because it's kind of drizzling lightly. And so it's nice to have this here and ready to go. There's kind of another little waterfall type spot there. Another little waterfall area there. This spot is really pretty. I'm, I'm really excited we found this spot. Plenty of space too, but uh, didn't want to get too close to the water so it's easy to pull out of here tonight. So we found a local meat market and snagged some of these steaks. Uh, they were really good meat. I don't quite remember the place, uh, but it was kind of near Sturgis. And uh, yeah, so we kind of started to trim these up just so we could grill them nicely. Um, this is this, you know, kind of collapsible grill that I was talking about a little earlier in the video. Uh, it is like a three-in-one grill, runs on LP if you're using the heating element and you can just set it up. Uh, I've got this cool like six jar REI sort of system. I think it's a GSI thing. I bought it from REI, uh, but you can put a bunch of spices in there and it's pretty slick. Um, yeah, I just was using my little pullout table here and uh, brought the Iceco fridge and, and Rome stuff along. Um, but yeah, this was kind of our setup and uh, just prepping this grill. This grill actually heated really hot, uh, so didn't have any problems with getting this up to temp or actually cooking the meat, uh, you know, through. I know sometimes like portable grills like this can be a little bit weak, uh, but this one had more than enough power, so that was a good thing. Um, yeah, also, also putting on some Worcestershire sauce. It's kind of a must uh, when we're grilling. But yeah, I think these turned out really well. They tasted really good. And I definitely like this grill. Uh, just going to work on a way to be able to store it conveniently in the rig. Uh, but overall, just sort of testing it out uh, it went quite well. The big thing was just having to clean up afterward. Uh, took a little bit of paper towels and whatnot. But it seemed like the worst cleanup was right when it was sort of seasoning where this you know new metal uh, was starting to get some of this grease to adhere. Uh, but yeah, awesome kind of quick shakedown trip, so to speak, uh, with a bunch of the new C4 goodies uh, that I put on. So yeah, stay tuned. Going to be talking a lot more about the C4 armor in coming videos, uh, but overall, it's a success. Hey everyone, so I forgot to film an intro for that video and uh, got home. Just wanted to show you. So this is the little grill that I cook some steaks and it started to get dark after we were cooking the steaks. So I just uh, wasn't really able to film super well out there, but that grill was actually pretty sweet. I, I liked the small form factor. Uh, one thing that was a little bit annoying uh, was cleaning up afterwards. So you sort of assemble it and you disassemble it. Um, but this guy, he's, it's a really new company and he's kind of looking for any feedback he can get. So uh, I still think it's a cool product. and. Uh, he sent an email that I completely missed uh, attaching like this little cleaning device that he uses and that seems to make the cleanup process a lot easier. So that was good to know and uh, I actually took the grill for a couple more trips afterward and it's, I don't know if it like seasons or something, but I figured that you can kind of wipe it down fairly quick and it seemed to be just fine. So since using it then, uh, it's been easier to use kind of every single time. Uh, it collapses really small. The biggest thing that I've just noticed is the grill kind of uses the cover and then it uses the grate uh, to hold everything inside. So if you don't clean that grate well, wherever you set it, that grate is gonna touch something. So maybe he'll uh, add like a tray or something on the bottom that you wouldn't really get dirty just to keep it clean uh, outside of the grill uh, when you're hauling it around. So. I'll have to let him know about that feedback. Uh, but otherwise, I do like this grill. I think you should go check it out, put it on your radar. Uh, it's not just a gas grill, like you can remove the heating element and he kind of claimed it's sort of a three in one style grill. So uh, go check it out. I will link it down below. I'll link that cleaning wand down below, I think it is. And uh, yeah, also wanna talk a little bit about that Ice Cove fridge. Uh, I really like it. It's the dual zone version of a single zone where I made a video on I'll link it somewhere up here. Uh, Iceco just makes awesome products. They make high quality, budget-friendly products. 
Uh, this one in particular, I didn't use a cover on, but in the past I have a cover for my single zone. Um, it doesn't really draw too much extra power with the dual zone compared to the single zone. And so, yeah, just using it on this trip was super awesome uh, because I had my uh, dad and brother with me on this trip and we were in the Forerunner. We didn't necessarily stay in the Forerunner uh, because there's just too many of us, but uh, the dual zone held all of the stuff we had in there, like different drinks, uh, some frozen meat and some other stuff. So yeah, it was really slick to have it along and the dual zone definitely adds a bit of extra functionality that you're not gonna have with a single zone. Uh, I ran this off of my EcoFlow Delta Max, which is a 2000 watt hour battery. So pretty good size, uh, but most people, if you're running any sort of substantial fridge, you're gonna use at least a 1000 watt hour, but probably bigger. Um, but yeah, the Delta Max ran it no problem because I had the luxury of taking it to somewhere with actual power. Anytime we were around an outlet, I just would plug it in, it charges in about an hour or two because it charges at over a thousand watts. So uh, the battery is super easy to just quick top off. So if you're somebody that's kind of traveling around and you're not purely off grid, uh, that's really something to consider as well. You can just stop at a rest stop or somewhere where there's an outlet and plug it in and you know have lunch for an hour or something, kind of like an electric vehicle. All you gotta do is quick grab it out of the car, charge it up, put it back in. So uh, one thing I will mention though, is I was watching uh, Tinker's Adventures video. Uh, I don't remember which one it was, but he was talking about how you can uh, add like this system in your car to be able to charge these bigger batteries at a higher output than a lot of the other inverters. Uh, and I'm gonna be looking into a system like that for the Forerunner. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I've also got some Land Cruiser content coming, uh, added a couple really cool things to it. And uh, yeah, so stay tuned. If you're not subscribed already, definitely encourage you to do so. I think I make some pretty sweet content and, and most of the content I make, I feel like you can translate or learn something that would be useful for other vehicles. So don't feel like the fact that I have a Forerunner or a Land Cruiser kind of isolates you out if you're a Tacoma owner, Ford Ranger, Ford Raptor, whatever it is, uh, ZR2 Bison, whatever you got, Outback, you know? I think there's stuff that I talk about that hopefully brings some sort of value to you. So thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.